everybody thank you for joining me this beautiful warm tuesday evening october 21st i believe your outpost on the west coast out here in sunny southern california uh there she is there she is guys um if you're new to the my channel and these video series build uh we have done a full restoration on uh, almost 90 year old um old scale brass uh steam locomotive from the very very beginnings of the old skill hobby um very hard to find kit uh very hard to find in good condition uh and this was a full restoration this has been an interesting i've never had a model of such vintage such age come in for a full resto like this and it was a huge learning experience and we're not done i just wanted to show john and everybody else all you guys that have been supporting me and following me and and, and sharing kind words and our banter back and forth uh, where we have come along. But um, you're pretty cool, huh? Pretty cool. I can't keep the locomotive running for too long because the um, this open frame motor draws a lot of amperage and it keeps tripping the breaker on my power pack. So uh, And I brought down more power packs that I have upstairs, but I haven't touched them in a while. They need a little work before... I can get them to operate something like this, but it's something I got to do because I'm going to be working on these babies for a long time. So we finally finished the electrical. Um, it was um, very frustrating for me at first. I don't know anything about electrical. And uh, other than attach two wires to the Pitman can motor and uh, put it on a track and turn the power on and there she goes. And, and um so it looks like a giant mess of spaghetti but it's actually each colored wire has a, a alligator clip on each end and what it is it's for testing purposes so you don't have to solder and unsolder and stuff yeah. and if there's a problem let's say i rewired these wrong and i had to switch them you just unclip them so it looks messy but it's not um watch a lot of videos on youtube i finally uh saw enough videos where uh where they showed the village vis visualization of uh 
how these things should be wired in terms of model railroading, model railroad, railroad models. I was watching a lot of just basic electrical 101 and they were explaining everything but they weren't explaining well, okay how do i attach it to the track you know the power to transformer and the locomotive and stuff and uh, it finally all was explained to me in a real great video which i'm going to bring it up because i want to give this guy his props um here you go i am going to bring it up without this guy's help i, I would have been lost and uh, i'm going to give him a shout out Okay, there we go. So right here, um, well-deserved shout out. I'm going to let him know too. Um, he explained the bridge rectifier, how it works. He explained um, other things also. In particular case of three-row trains, you need a double pole, double throw switch. We don't need it in our case here. And he actually showed you how to wire the bridge rectifier, how to connect the different leads, where they go in terms of our models and then to the track and to the transformer and i got it on the first try so i did that barely last night and you saw the results right now the locomotive runs great she just trips the power pack so i have to keep the the runs for about three two to three minutes long uh, otherwise we have to sit for about 10 minutes while the breaker resets but i want to say hi and a huge thank you and give toy trains and tricks right here on youtube huge huge shout out he, very informative it looks like he goes out of his way to answer questions and stuff like that if you guys ever have any electrical issues uh, in terms of your trains he would be a good person to go to if you have nowhere else to turn um, also real quick um, we did we did figure out our drive shaft and um, I took Art Hayes advice and we use a speedometer cable it's a little noisy because I use brass ends on each side, one inside the locomotive here and one inside, or obviously it's going to be inside the tender. Uh, I should use like a hard um, ABS type plastic or maybe even a Baker-like plastic or maybe even a wood dowel on each end because when I run it with metal on each end, and you guys know I love metal, but unfortunately there's a lot of click, 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 clickety clack and metal chatter because of the spinning revolutions and stuff and let me give you guys an example of that and it's quieted down i put some oil in those but it should run a lot quieter because the engine itself is quiet so we're still experimenting on that but we are going to definitely uh, um, follow art hayes um, wonderful advice where he said use the speedometer cable and i think john mench i spoke to john a little while ago about an hour and a half ago and John mentioned he talked to Art Hayes, and I think Art Hayes told him use the use the speedometer cable. So, um, God, I love old scalers, man. Just what a fun, fun community of just cool characters, man. But anyways, uh, I get home late at night last night. Um, there's a care package waiting for me on my front porch from John Lyon, and I opened it, and he took his time, uh, very considerate, to send me a whole bunch of excellent reference material on scale craft locomotives and products, the catalogs from throughout the years, from the models we're rebuilding, and we're going to be rebuilding here for quite some time. So these are going to be excellent reference materials and drawings and pictures to look at and read the information, what they say. Uh, as you can see right there, this is the one for our Southern Pacific uh, Scalecraft Mountains. This is from 1936. So our, lo our kits, the locomotives we got here the other day are from about 1936. There's your Scalecraft 1939 layout building guide and catalog. Beautiful condition. John went ahead and put them in these protective uh, plastic sleeves. Uh, this one I opened last night with my cup of coffee. Model Railroad Data Book Scalecraft this is from 1950. And we have one from uh, 46, 40, uh, 41, 42 edition. Oh, it's a reprint and a photocopy of 1948 catalog. Beautiful condition. I'm not going to open them now tonight. This is an active workbench. We're actually working before we film this. We'll be working after I post this on YouTube tonight. So there's oil and grease and splotches of gunk everywhere um, as we're actively working on the John Lyon uh, locomotive so um 
uh, but we will be doing a review on these guys here in the uh, upcoming couple of weeks. Definitely, they're beautiful catalogs, and uh, just uh, I'm dying to see what's between the covers. Just it, I feel like a kid at Christmas right now. But um, there you go, guys. We're getting closer. Uh, paint is right around the corner. I know I keep saying that, but it really is. Um, me and John were discussing paint schemes and, and ideas and stuff like that this afternoon. So let's go ahead and, and run a little bit more. I can't do the welcome to Cal back to California or welcome to California. Um, uh, uh, video because we can only keep the power on for about a minute and a half before pasta breaker. But let's enjoy that minute and a half. Let's pick another song here just for background noise. And actually, let's just keep it like that. Um, what do you guys think? Uh, wow. I could have never, ever done this without your guys' kind words, your inspiration, your, your, you push me along, and, and you follow with enthusiasm. And um, uh, I just... Doing it by myself would be impossible. I wouldn't even have attempted. So, so check out, guys. Check it out what you guys came up with right there. Ninety year, ninety year old locomotive that hasn't run in a while. Well, she's going to be running the rails again here pretty soon. Uh, we got a nice surprise for John Lyon and you guys here on YouTube that are watching right now. Uh, for the grand finale, it's going to be a really, really neat. I'm in the process of setting it up, but, but let's just enjoy this for right now. Um, I wasn't planning on shooting this video or any videos tonight, but yet here we are, like always. Let's check out. We reverse the direction. There you could see, still need a little bit of work back there, but that's fine. Shut that power off before she pops our breaker. Okay, and we'll, we'll, um, we'll come back to it. But another thing I had to do, and I was telling John, is I... I took apart the solder joints, the silver solder joints, and the gusset plate, and I repositioned our cab. So she sits about, not quite an eighth, probably about, about sixteenth of an inch lower and forward. Also resulted in, in, in a lot of the gaps to close and become more tight. Um, we had to pour some solder down in here. We put, still put little gusset plates underneath and we have some supporting brackets, L brackets that you can't see underneath the cab floor to keep from the cab from, from, you know, well, let's do this like that. Let me get on the other side of the tripod. Um, okay. To keep the cab from, um, over time, uh, going backwards. And um, forever and ever, the best way to handle this model here is from underneath the cab roof. And, and underneath this, where your cow catcher, or even by the cylinders. This way is also not a bad way to pick this guy up, because these are heavy-duty uh, walkways they put on the side of the boiler. And you're not going to hurt it at all like other more modern Korean, more delicate Korean or Japanese type brass imports. And uh, let's see here. Mm. All right, let's do this one more time. Remember that big hole in the front of our uh, smoke box front? So let's, let's do another run one more time. But anyways, guys, I hope you like it. Um, Still got a lot more work to do. Got to do some painting on her. And um, I just wanted to kind of show that, yes, there is progress on this. And um, remember, guys, I don't do this as a business anymore. I do it um, for guys who contact me 
and just won an heirloom or something means special to him to come back to life and um condition I'll, i gotta film it on youtube i gotta talk about history about the owner and his model and um but i work in baby steps and and um i don't want to get burned out especially if since these models are not my personal models so what's the old adage cut twice or measure twice cut once uh, when i do this for a customer i actually or a client i should say i actually measure about six seven times and cut once if that kind of makes sense how i'm trying to exaggerate also keeps me from making mistakes and getting frustrated or just getting burned out in general there's a whole world outside my front door or the door of my shop here uh, people girls the yankees and the dodgers in the world series this friday going at it um just man life life is really getting good for me it's 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 um i could go on and on and on but i want to do that but the enthusiasm comes out here and 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 as a result as a result the model uh shows it so let's just run it a little bit more backwards and forwards and we will call it a day so we're learning as we're going along and um hopefully this video will help you when you tackle your restoration project on your Ed alexander 440s also I want to thank the following people. Like always, I want to talk, uh, thank Art Hayes, Kerry Williams, Mark Beckelhaupt, Mopar Nut 62, Dave Parsley, Robert Over BNR, Northern Horse Journey, Jim Klein, wherever you are, or Tom Klein, wherever you are, say hi to your pop for me. Big Charlie, like always, uh, Freeman, JPLK, uh, my buddy over at World's Histories Miniatures House, um, John Lyon, um, my buddies who are long gone down at the San Diego Model Railroad Museum who will always be in my the makeup of my soul of who I am and that was Ray Bakke, Gene Laguiti, Roger Jenkins, Pat Gary, Hal Dow, Bill, uh, Bill Worthington, John Hansen, and uh, me and Bill Bock are still around. Um, and let's do another tight shot here. And there's all that monkey motion people like. So hope you liked the video. You guys have an awesome rest of your week. But most importantly, you guys have a blessed rest of your week, okay? You all take care. See you at the next one. Bye.